Yeah, and then I'll kick it off. Hey everyone, um, this is a retrospective about the feedback we've gotten uh, on the onboarding satisfaction. Um, as all retros, they um, are the goal is that to see like what can we do as next steps to improve uh, the situation. There is no blame for anyone. Um, so if you happen to find something that you may take personal, uh, let's not, uh, or let's let's uh, mention it and let's let's work on that. Um, let's also stick within the topic just because uh, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, we'll kick it off with um, what did we do well? What should we definitely keep doing? It's good to list those things as well, just to make sure that we don't only focus on the negatives and we're sure that um, we don't uh, stop doing what we notice that works. So whoever wants to go first, you don't have to wait until you've written it down. You can just kick it off. I'll take a minute to share why we invited everyone from pre-hiring. We felt like um, we're, all the same, we're all one team and we're all working towards the same goal is to create a great people experience, whether that's pre or post hiring. And so we felt the journey with new hires of starting at that, at that very first screening call, that very first engagement with the candidate. And so we just wanted to include the entire team as we work towards this. Some of the feedback also indicated that there was a lot of surprises. So when they, the day they onboard. And so we wanted to work on those surprises specifically. I can start with um, what we did well. Some of the feedback that we receive quite frequently is um, that they really enjoyed the task list. I know that's very simple, but the task list being able to check things off and say, yep, that's what we like. So being able, they really enjoyed um, dog fooding, GitLab and utilizing those. I can add one more that I've specifically noticed being an onboarding now for so long and having a really long view of it. I think um, something we're doing really well is getting the emails out on time. So that was something that was super difficult last year based on just multiple time zones um, and, and having new hires joining in all these different time zones. So those are going out on time, which is great for someone maybe in New Zealand or in a time zone that's very far away from, um, from the time zones we're in right now. Does the recruiting and CES team have anything to maybe add here of what's going well um, pre-hiring for new hires that we can maybe indicate here? Hey, Nadia, it's Cindy. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, please go ahead. Sorry. My question was, um, does access to this survey data, like the verbatim feedback, do we have that on the recruiting side of the house so we can kind of mill through that a little bit? Beverly has created a, um, a quick overview of all the feedback we're getting and how our scores have sort of reduced. And these are scores that shocked us a little bit, which is why we wanted to have a retro about it. Yeah. So Beverly, Beverly, if you're on the call, don't you want to share a few key ones that we've now been able to pick up? Um, and, and Cindy, if you want access to that, I can, I can check if that is shared publicly. I don't think it is because team members sometimes add their, their names and some of it is anonymous. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it might be tricky for us to um, open that sheet up to anyone because it is meant to be an anonymous exercise and there are team member names attached to, I would say, probably 90% of the surveys. Um, but some of the feedback that I've picked up, um, I've been trying to pick out the key pieces that have been mentioned when we've received a lower score. And a lot of it centers on um, self-enablement. So I've got a doc here, it is very rough, um, that I can share it on my, on my screen and then um, we can have a look at it from there. Can everybody see that? Um, so a lot of it does center around um, requests for using more video-centric. Um, mechanisms when we're doing onboarding. And the, the tricky part of that is it's very difficult to scale and very difficult to maintain. So we use the text information and direct, link directly to the handbook, 
um, because that's where we iterate and that's where we're constantly updating. Um, and that's where the single source of truth lies. So a lot of the requests center on that. A lot of people have asked questions around, um, can we not make it a bit more hands-on and a bit more human? Um, and having face-to-face -face time with face-to-face -face time um, with their managers or team members or face-to-face um, -face training not and that's also very difficult for us to do because we're asynchronous and um, doesn't really speak to the core of our values so these are just a handful of things that we've sort of picked up on i've made a couple of comments for myself this is really not a document for me to be sharing on the screen um, but it really is just around looking at <laughs> self-enablement and making sure that new hires are 110% aware of what to expect when they're going to be starting. And that means dog food and GitLab and making use of an issue um, to carry out their onboarding tasks and being able to refer between the handbook and their issue and gather the information that they need to successfully do that. So this is where I think a little bit of my concern lies as the team lead. Um, and the onboard, onboarding DRI is just the communication piece. Oh, have we need to maybe just align on the expectation setting um, and what someone's coming on board thinking that they're going to do in their first few days of onboarding. I don't know if that answers your question, Cindy. This is very helpful. Thank you for sharing. Just reading to that helps set the stage a little bit more. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, so we've, I think I'm, um, Nadia, if you want to, sorry. Yeah, we've made a few iterations on the welcome emails. Um, I noticed the onboarding welcome email, of the onboarding template and how we onboarded GitLab sort of fell off of those. We're not sure at which iteration that happened, but I think like having a very tactical example handy um, is what we're striving towards. And this is part of what we're going to discuss and what we can do better. But what we want to establish today is what happens during recruiting that is going well in terms of self-enablement, self-learning, an asynchronous environment. So what is setting up the, the new hires up for success um, in, that, in that very first stages? And maybe there's things that's happening during screening. I don't have access to any of that in Greenhouse anymore, so I can't check. But I think these are the type of things that like very tactically can help us um, and even then help change or iterate on that if um, if those are things that's maybe misaligned or not aligned to what we're doing on the on the onboarding side um, like I'll give an example this feedback on more video um, GitLab can't create an overly amount of video content because to keep that updated is a is much much harder than written content and there is some great information about that on the communications page that that a lot of new hires covers during um, onboarding. I think it's still being missed on the why. And so having that discussion in screening is, is really what we're often figuring out. How, how do we influence those screening calls to happen for new hires to join and knowing exactly what to expect, not just on their first day, but you know, while working at GitLab. It's a very high written content environment. That's not gonna change at this point. If it's going to change, it's going to take years to change to pure video content. And I think it's still going to take longer to update. So not, not a boring solution. Um, so yeah, we'd love to hear a bit about screening and, and, and what's happening there that is setting folks up for success. Yeah, I think that's interesting, Nadia, sorry. Um, Certainly, that's a question I get when I'm screening people. Occasionally, people will ask me, what's the onboarding like? And I'll tell them that it's task driven um, and they'll get plenty of time and they can reach out and there'll be a buddy. Um, but it can look a bit daunting. So I do set that scene. Um, however, it's fine. You know, you get plenty of time to do it. Sometimes it's more comforting to get into your day job, but really it's worthwhile to take the time to familiarize yourself with a lot of what's happening. And just for, by the fact that they've already had a look at the handbook, you know, the, they understand that, you know, things are very much documented and it's, it's really about those processes. And, and, but it's not something I would say that I would communicate every time I speak to somebody. So I would take that away from this conversation to maybe point that out in the future. 
Yeah, we, we have an open issue right now that we're working through on the recruiting side of the house uh, where we're working to streamline um, the screening experience because historically it's been kind of up to the recruiter on what exactly is covered. And we definitely want to still let the recruiter have their own style and their own approach to those screening conversations. But we do have certain data points that we're looking to start to collect consistently and potentially we could add into kind of that screening checklist to make sure we cover and set expectations in that initial call about how onboarding works at GitLab. The unique thing that we're facing right now, and I don't think the feedback we have right now is showing that because the folks that probably completed those OSAT surveys, they were probably hired before we started this new outbound model. But what we're starting to see is as we're going out and, um, and looking for this great talent that um, these folks are not as aware of GitLab and maybe have not played around with the handbook. So the recruiters are, are spending a little bit more time kind of coaching folks um, through GitLab and how things work and directing them to pages in the handbook, having to kind of spoon feed people a little bit more than we have in the past. Um, so I definitely think this is a great conversation to start now because given the, the folks that we're going after today, this could continue to be an issue. So I think this is a great thing for us to make sure we incorporate the screening calls. Um, another thing that comes to mind is our screen calls are only 30 minutes and that goes by very, very quickly. Um, so we may want to think about like, do we restructure like the lengths and how we schedule those screening calls? I know, you know, we try very hard to keep that 30 minutes, but I know when I was screening all day, every day, trying to get every single thing within that 30 minute call was very difficult. Um, and if, if we do need to spend some more time kind of coaching folks on GitLab, getting them the resources they need to be successful and setting expectations on what it is really like to work here, maybe we need a little bit more time in those screening calls. Chantal, I think you wanted to say something. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say some feedback I received from a newer hire is that they wanted to know like the exact amount of time it was probably going to take to move through the process. So I used to just kind of be general and say, oh, it can take a little while. But now I try to give like I try to give them an average number of days um, based on like the most recent uh, data that we have, um, because I think that, that that is helpful. Thanks. That is helpful. I can clarify. Yeah, onboarding shouldn't take less than two weeks. Um, so it's two weeks to 30 days. I would encourage most hires to stick to a minimum of two weeks and not, not continue in the new role prior to that, if that's helpful to the recruiting team. And um, that's really what we indicate. Um, we have seen where um, a, uh, what do you call it, uh, in-position training, so on-the-job training starts on the same day as onboarding, and that has a really a weird effect on a new hire. The first day's tasks is a full day's of work, potentially maybe even slightly longer for some folks that aren't used to this very engineering savvy way of working. Um, and then setting yourself up on things like one password and Slack is unusual for most for most people in the world, and um, not just non-engineers. So I think um, you, if someone starts in a new position, uh, sorry, training in a new position and onboarding, I think that should be discouraged purely because we really want to create a great experience from day one onwards. And without that first two weeks, I don't think anyone can get through onboarding. Um, some of the data we shared today is actually from new hires that joined all the way back from January. So we try to really look for trends and, and feedback and some of them shared their feedback late. So it's not just the, it's not just from the, um, the, the current outbound model, but we also do have outbound model folks that have joined because it's a 30 day survey, right? First 30 days they can complete it. So there are a few folks that are, that were sourced that are in this, um, in this batch. Um, are there um, any just to uh, for to moving on uh, Alex I did see you on mic and mic uh, up again unmuted and muted again I don't know if you want to say something to wrap up that first point and then we can move on to what should we have done better things that we already know that didn't work out uh, thanks for noticing Lynn I was just going to say um, that something that I think we have been doing really well is as soon as we get the results, we're quickly iterating and seeing how we can improve um, the onboarding um, templates. But yeah, I think next focus is, would be great to focus it in on um, pre-onboarding and, and things like that. We can touch on that now. Uh, 
Okay. I know some things were already mentioned in the first point, um, what we could have done better, but anyone else who wants to chime in on that? I just wanted to mention something before we carry on is just that um, the people experience team is very busy with pre onboarding. Um, I don't want to necessarily frame them as interventions, but we're Emily's worked pretty hard to get us ready to start doing a pre onboarding call. And that's really going to be an AMA for all new hires that are about to onboard um, and an opportunity for them to sort of ask any questions that they've had. We have also been sort of circling around I, the idea of having a directory and an FAQ document, which at this stage we're not going to be implementing just yet. So our intention is really to get that communication up front um, once they've signed their contract and everything aligned um, along with that pre-onboarding call to make sure that they're completely up to speed. So this is really just an opportunity for us to all see how we can all collaborate and work on it together in addition to the initiatives that we're busy with at the moment. There's no one from CES on the team. So I, I feel like I don't want to call them out not being here, but I just want to highlight the welcome emails. We'd love to iterate on those. We've had a look. I'll just quickly share my screen. I've got an open issue here in front of me. Um, this is the, the email that goes out um, as the person accepts the offer. From my understanding, if I'm wrong, please speak up. I could be wrong. Um, and this is a very like great tactical email to get because you know what's going to happen next. Um, so from setting up your workspace to knowing like what you need to do in terms of getting hardware, I9 is really for the US team members. There's that welcome call that we, we're wanting to include thanks to Beverly's team. Um, and then there's a section about onboarding and, and their first day. There's a second email that happens, I think sort of midway through, it's this one here. I'd love to iterate a little bit on this because I think um, there's a few things that could be missed. That is, it's that two week check-in just before someone joins. For some team members, they only have two weeks. In the US, it's a two week notice period in a lot of um, states. And so we, we really wanna make sure when they get this email that they have a very clear idea of what to expect in working for GitLab. So it's not just the, the onboarding piece. I think this is about working asynchronously successfully at GitLab, expecting to self-learn and self-enable are key things that to set them up for success. During onboarding, we try our very best to make sure that they get that successful experience to continue being successful at GitLab and to ensure attrition and retention. But at the same time, we just wanna make sure that the message that they get two weeks before is really about, this is how GitLab does remote onboarding. This is what to expect next. These links are gonna be helpful in your in, in onboarding with GitLab and moving forward with your career at GitLab. So maybe this is a section I think we could improve a little bit on to make sure that it's not a sort of a general, um, um, that the direction of the email isn't to a general audience, because I think things like our values, communication, strategy, product, those are things that should be covered during the recruitment process from my understanding. Um, and these are things that also reflect on onboarding. So I would highly recommend we iterate on this email perhaps to make it very GitLab specific and perhaps quite tactical um, before they join. Does anyone disagree, agree, happy to get some opinions on this one? Yeah, I think that would be a great place. Sorry to iterate. Um, and if we could just work with Ashley and Betsy on that, I think that would be a good course of action. But that seems like a nice, simple fix and iteration to this issue. Sorry to cut, cut some off. No, I completely agree. I think this, um, if we were able to update this email would be a really great starting point. Um, potentially put some of those, maybe take that FAQ that we've developed and instead of it being an FAQ, but utilize what are those common areas that our new team members are struggling with or having similar questions and proactively address those with links in this email um, would be beneficial. I think it would also be interesting once we draft this to share it, like obviously in an issue with some of our new hires and see like, does, would, this, would this have been more helpful? Would this have answered your questions? You know, just letting, obviously everything's open, but like if we just directly kind of ping some of those new hires and bringing them in, um, we could make a really nice um, email here. That's a great suggestion. Thanks for that one. I agree, we have, I haven't thought of that. That's a great idea.
Anyone else got anything to add? I did just throw our results into a like, let's see what common words we see in the from the survey. And one of the most, I mean, besides like onboarding issue, those kind of words, the most common word that I kept seeing over and over and was overwhelming. Um, so I just think we should keep that in mind is that was the really the only word that didn't make like that wasn't attached to onboarding in some way. So I think that's something I don't, um, I don't know how we could or what we could, but I wanted to share that finding is with that. Honest question for the, all of us have onboarded at GitLab, but would it be less overwhelming if you know what's coming? Would that help? I think that that would help a lot personally. Like if I knew what to expect coming in to my first day, I mean, I think that would help anybody, honestly. Maybe we could put in an example. Well, I guess the template's open for anyone to view, but they might not know to look at, I, I wouldn't have known to look at the template if that makes sense before I started. Um, I think also, no, feedback from my manager, Nadia, when I first started, you kind of made it clear, like, this is your onboarding issue. I want you to focus on this. Don't stress about it. It may be overwhelming. You kind of set those expectations. And that was really beneficial for me to know, like, no one is going to hunt me down day one if I don't complete um, every single checkbox at 11 p.m. to make sure I've finished it. Um, so I think that was really helpful for me. I agree. I think that a man the hiring manager plays a big part, especially in that first week. I know when I started and Steve was my manager, I was first like, I need to get all this done. And I was stressing out and trying to be like, when can I get my recs? And like, I was just ready to go in my real job. And he's like, take your time. It's okay. Like, you know, no rush. These are important things that we want you to spend the time on. Um, so I think having that assurance from your manager, making sure that they're fully available to that new hire to set that expectation and set them at ease, that, that, that played a huge part for me. Cause I'm a, I'm a someone who loves to check the box and I want to like be ahead in days. That's just how I am. But to have someone say, no, slow down. Like you need to slow down. It's going to benefit you in the long run. It was just very helpful to have that. Just in the interest of time, uh, I've heard some next steps that we could do, but maybe we should uh, also make sure that there's some DRIs for them or a team that will handle it and then dis decide on the DRI later. So I've heard that um, the email, um, getting buy-in from the hiring manager to make sure that they are aligned with it and he give the team member time. And there was another one, um, help me out, please. Uh, I am making sure that somehow we communicate the overwhelming part uh, that might lead to some thinking, but that is as a, someone who onboarded as well. That is definitely something that if you go in knowing that, I think it might help. But again, I think that might be also on the hiring manager, but let's see. Um, for the email, I guess those that team isn't here. Is someone in this call uh, read, willing to take that on, on with them? Kind of collaborate on, on reworking the email? Yeah, I could loop in. Um, Ashley, we have okay. an issue for this conversation too, right? Great. So I just loop her right into that. Okay, okay. that's good. Uh, yeah, the hiring manager buy-in, I think that might be more difficult. Um, I guess maybe we can do some kind of campaign around this uh, like you know if you let your people on board well that means they'll stay uh, or you know like their tenure mm -hmm. will be longer something like that I don't know if I'm wondering if we shouldn't put an AMA out at some stage so we did the one with the sales team around onboarding but I'm wondering if we shouldn't just put one out to all of the people managers uh -huh. um, within GitLab Nadia I don't know what you think about that but it might be a cool opportunity for us to just answer any lingering questions um, and we could probably use the same slide deck and just tweak it out a little bit I would do it company wide yeah, and not specific okay. to onboarding managers purely because anyone could become a manager at GitLab at some point, and so mm -hmm. I would do it company wide and um, 
and say this is directed at hiring managers, but keep in mind you could all become one and buddies, um, onboarding buddies. So it could be an AMA for onboarding, for hiring managers and onboarding buddies, but we invite get is, up. There's something that people experience team will organize or yeah. am I? Yeah, okay, great. That could just in the interest of time, we need to move on. Uh, then making sure we communicate the overwhelming part. Um, we can start, you know, boring, have it added in the email very clear or whatever, but is someone willing to start with this? And then we'll see how we can iterate uh, over this. I think something that might be able to help with this is um, creating a, pos a template for a hiring manager to send with that initial email to their new team members. Here are some points that we would like you to cover. Um, make sure that we're all on the same page, maybe create a template for the hiring manager. And they can obviously adjust it as needed, but give them some points that we would like them to cover as a hiring manager. Great, and I hear you volunteering for this? I hear myself as well volunteering Back for that, yeah. <laughs> Great, <laughs> then that's it. Anyone else? There's, we're over time. So if no one is pinging or saying anything, we're gonna wrap this up. And I think we have three good points to work on. And um, I think uh, let's bring each other in the issues if we need team cross team collaboration. Awesome. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for, so much. For Thank taking, you, everyone. <laughs> taking such care with the time. <laughs> <laughs> have a good day, everyone. You, Bye. Bye.